Yeah, I can hear you, Camilla. Great, and you should be able to record as well. So we'll do broadcast section first. Uh, JD, when you're ready, then we'll move on to radio. Perfect. Uh, Scott, um, thank you so much for joining us here at Sky Sports. Sorry, sorry, JD, can you switch off your video? Oh, okay. No, really. Sorry, thank you. Uh, Scott, thank you so much for joining us here at Sky Sports. Uh, first of all, I hope you're well. Um, if you could just give us a, an injury update and just give us some as well with the boys. Can you hear me, Kenny? Uh, I think I can. I think it's, did you say you can hear me? One second. Uh, is that better? Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah. If you could just give me a, just a fitness and a um, uh, of the squad and just how the boys are getting. Yeah, I mean, injury-wise, we're, um, we're, in a, we're in a good place. Three of the all players uh, trained today, albeit it was a, it was a light session. We didn't, we didn't really do much because obviously it's, it's been a quick turnaround. But um, all players trained other than one player, which was Harry Arter. Um, yeah, I mean, we'll see where we are tomorrow morning with them players, which obviously were, were, were nursing things and see, see how, how good they are come the morning if there's no setbacks. And yeah, we're in, we're in a good place to, to go. I just wanted to ask about uh, Alexander in particular. I don't know if a problem um, after the Wardrobe going to the first leg, but how are you feeling about his sort of fitness level? It's easy that everyone trained today. Mitrovic? I think you was asking about Mitrovic. Yeah, again, it was his first day back training today. So um, we had to make a decision the other day because of obviously the, the dynamics of where we are in the, in the season now and the, and the game was going to be played over two legs. Um, it's been a bit of a, a, a small issue, which we've had to, we had to make, I had to make a call on really. So um, yeah, he, he, he's trained today. He's, um, so we'll see where we are tomorrow. Same with Cavalero. Cavalero trained today with the team and the squad. Um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll make a decision come tomorrow where, where we are. From both. Scott, how do you carry that momentum from the first game? Um, obviously, it was a great game the first game, the last game, but how do you carry that momentum now? Technically, you're only at half time. Well, I mean, uh, I think we need to take the positives from, from the other night and where we were and how we performed as a team. and some of the key key things what got us that performance, certainly. Players are in a good place. Confidence is very high at the moment. We're coming off a, a very good run of games in terms of momentum, not just from this time, momentum in, in where we are at this present time is, is very good. I am conscious. I do realise that obviously that's, this, this game's at half-time really. Okay, we put ourselves in a fantastic position. 2-0 up. And we, played, we played very, very well. And then in saying that, I also understand you're up against a wounded animal in, in Cardiff and we've got another game now, which obviously is going to bring a different challenge and, and, and different, different things to, to what, what the game may pan out like. I think as always, and the way we prepare every single game is about us, what we do, the challenge is what we may face, but ultimately how we put our stamp on, on the game and bring our qualities to, to the football match, which we'll try and We'll try and do to, like we always do, try and nullify the problems what Cardiff will cause us. And um, like I say, try and get a real control and put our stamp on, on, on the game and try, try and get a positive result. And that's, that's our aim and that's, that's what we'll be planning to do really. in saying that again. I, we also understand the challenges and what a tough game it will be. And, um, we realise that as well. We need to respect that. You talk so much about momentum. I, I feel probably going to the playoffs. You're definitely the most difficult team, especially out of the four of you. How much is momentum and confidence a bigger factor in the final sort of three? Your hope? Momentum is, 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 is massive. And yeah, of course you want to be you want to be the team that are informed. You want to be that team all the time, don't you? You want to be that team in the middle of the season, beginning of the season. You're always, as a coach, that's what you're always searching for. You're searching to to win football matches and and obviously trying to be undefeated. And you're always trying to you're trying to build little tiny blocks that will get bigger and bigger and bigger. And at this moment, that's what we're trying to do. And, we, and at this present moment, time we're in a good run. Players are are, are in a good place. I, I feel a real confidence about us. I feel a real buzz about us. Um, and I think I alluded to after the game, you need to understand what gets us here and what gets us winning football matches, what, what gets us feeling like this. And that's an underlying foundation and that's something which, which we need to work on, we need to keep working on. 
and then you get to the end point, which is performance and all the good stuff you see, and you hope then that just pulls you through where we're getting to. So, yeah, look, I, I feel we're in a good place. Uh, I do, and I feel like the players are uh, are in a really good place and um, are confident, and rightly so. It's, the results are suggesting that. But at the same time, I know that football can sometimes come and punch you on the nose when you when you can be complacent or you can you can be the other side of of confident. Um, so, of course, as a as a fine line, we need to we need to make sure we're the right side of that line, and um, it's kind of my job to to try and to try and do that as well. Really, so um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll keep moving and keep progressing. Really. Uh, last two for me, Scott. I think the first one I want to ask you about was we saw a great individual goal, one of the best goals I've seen this year for Josh, especially. I just wanted to get from your perspective what you thought about that individual. Great goal from from Josh. Yeah, I mean the quality he showed, the skill he showed, and, and everything. What what that goal possessed is is some key. Key ingredients in Josh's game, what he brings and what he has. He's got, he's got very, very good quality. He's got skill, um, which which you see in that. And he had the coolness to to then put the finish in at the end of what was was some hard work and and obviously to get him in that in that position. Really, and I think I said it after the game. And I'm, Josh Lundham is a he's someone I'll probably always look back on in in. And always maybe a reference to people or to players or you know, whoever that may be. And the reason that being is because this this is a boy that in this modern day you, you make judgments on things and you make judgments on people at clips of fingers or very very instantly. So if someone has one performance and he doesn't play well, he's the worst player in the world and everything's wrong and he shouldn't have been here. No one should sign him. Um, shouldn't play. Whatever that is, and I'm not saying that was, but that, that's that's where Josh probably was when he first came in, and I think it's um, I'm not scared to to say that to him, or I'm not I'm not in any way thinking, oh, I don't want to mention that. I, I want to mention it because, and I want to mention it to him because it was during them moments and during them times. This is the world that the, the current world we we live in now, and it's as a as a young football player coming to a first team or a young person just in life, yeah. You, you're up against the world at this moment in time, which is very judgmental and doesn't give anyone time or doesn't doesn't think to themselves, you know what, let's let's judge this in ten games time or let's judge this in six months time. And we're not in that moment. And ultimately, as players and as young players, you need to develop a little bit of a thick skin. And you can't let their moments cripple you, or you can't let their moments sink you. And it's it's tough and it's hard. And the reason I say about Josh is because Josh was is an absolute prime example of that because he had it tough. He didn't play well, and he'd be probably the first to admit that he did struggle, and he didn't look the player you, you're seeing now. In fact, he looked the polar opposite to the person you're seeing. And um, but what he did have is he's had something about him to 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 back, battle through that, to realise, be resilient, to work hard with the support of everyone here. And obviously, develop, trying to develop and understand in the end goal, you get what you get the other day, which is now Josh is now the best player, and he probably isn't that either. And he's somewhere in between it both. And I suppose the balance and the rationale of, of where we are needs to needs to be addressed there. And that's down to me and my staff to do that. But certainly, I've got nothing but admiration for Josh and what he's done. To be honest with you, and the more being a young lad and a young boy who, at times when he first came here, had it pretty tough. When you're young, it's, it's probably hard to deal with. That he's come through that, and I, I'm proud of that. I'm, I'm, I know he had ability. What, what makes me more proud of is I see a young boy who's developed a little bit and has got has added some a little experience. What happened to him, I know, will be beneficial to him, not just in football but in life as well. And, and that's what makes me proud because it re-emphasizes what I was saying to him four or five months ago when he was getting stick and when he didn't feel down. It was like you need to persevere. You need to persevere. You need to. You need to. Be, you need to get strong. We need to work harder, and you'll come through this. And then when you see him come through it, you hope that maybe the bulb goes off in his head to think, "Yeah, you know what? Okay, that's that's what we need to do." Because sometimes words are words don't catch on. It's just action, what and, and, and a bit of luck and and, and, and fortunate in, in that. So that's pleased me the most, really. Um, finally, for me, Scott, the yeah. it's such a Togetherness, that's what you've worked with your captain a couple of times this year about you know, 
Um, I think it really did show, especially how much that victory at the final whistle. But then you, you had the, the card of manager at the same time, Harris speak about how he felt it was kind of over the top. Um, how, what's your response to those sort of comments at the top celebration? Um, well, look, I don't, I, I don't know. Um, I don't know what Neil said exactly after the game regarding that. I just, I didn't see it like that. And, and, and I see a team that's gone to Cardiff again. I don't know how many times Cardiff have lost this year, but it's not a lot. And we knew the challenge ahead of us. My team have scored two wonderful goals. I don't want to begrudge anyone celebrating the two goals. Right, and then the same with Cardiff. I won't, I won't begrudge anyone for that. In fact, I'm not going to criticise my team for doing that and celebrate how they want to celebrate. Regarding after the game, I'd be the first to to try and get a balance on it. And I, I, I thought we were, to be honest with you. I thought as a team, I didn't see any over over celebrations after the game. In fact, I thought I see a very professional team that understood that this was this is halfway done. This is my team and the squad of players here understand where we are in this in this tie and um, we understood that before the game we under we were preparing for for this and they've understood it from from that point as well and unless i missed something which was totally what, what i didn't see i see a team and the final whistle went off walk off the pitch walk into a changing room didn't over celebrate in fact was the polar opposite to that um yeah the only thing i can think is maybe the goal celebrations but Scoring two goals in, in the semi-finals of a playoff away from home, and I think that's part of football. I, mean, I think anyone would want to see that. Good luck tomorrow, Scott, and uh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. JD, thank you. If you could go on mute, that'd be grateful. And if we can move to radio now, um, Ian Abraham's Talk Sport. Hi, Scott. How are you? Hi, Lewis. You okay, mate? Yeah, very good. Thanks. Um, history will tell us no team's ever come from two 0 down. To win a tie, so does that suggest you've got one foot in the final, Scott? I uh, don't know about that. I mean, uh, we put ourselves in a great position. Of course, we have two 0 away from home. It's a, it's a, it's a good position. You, you, you want to grab that with both hands, but it's a uh, stats and and, and then the thing is obviously it is that, and of course it is. But at the same time, I think we understand that this is only half done here, and. Um, We've still got enough a massive 90 minutes up against the wounded animal in Cardiff who are coming coming tomorrow night, which you know, I don't know how they adopt the game or how they address the game and how they see it, but certainly this game is not over. I mean, my players realise that, we realise that. Um, and we need to adopt this game in a real positive, professional way with a mentality about us because that's what got us a result last time. If we do that, then I have no doubt we're in a very good position and we're... We're, 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 we're primed to, to, to do very well. I, so I, I have full, full confidence in that. But you need to know that there's a given what you need to turn up with tomorrow night and my team needs to understand that. But, um, if we do that, yeah, hopefully we'll be on the right end of the result. Um, but even more positives for you, you've just beaten them at home in the, in the championship as well. Sorry, no, say that again. I mean, another positive is to add to that but you've only just beaten them at home in the championship as well so you've got the, the form right behind you yeah we've got good form um, you know obviously we played Cardiff twice now and obviously got good results was it results and I think prior to that we've been the last six, seven, eight games we've we've got some good results undefeated in, in them games and we've got good momentum to be honest with you so but I think you get to this point in the season and you get to this point where it's not how football every game brings different challenges and um, certainly in this moment now, because obviously the dynamics of, of, of where where Cardiff are and where we are is is, is different in, in in the game and the management of that. So, um, but yeah, look, momentum's with us. Confidence is here. I sense a real buzz around the place. We're coming off of a real positive result against Cardiff, and the players the last two days since we've come back have had a real buzz about them, and we've had that for for the last few weeks. To be fair, I think that's a, you you see that the other night in the, in the way we perform. Confidence is a line between confidence and, and an arrogance and a sloppiness and stuff like that. We need to be the right side of that. Um, be very professional tomorrow night and, and, and let's try and get this job done and move on, hopefully, to, to what will be the final. 
how much of an advantage that a lot of your squad, including someone I thought had a great game the other night, Tom Kearney, has been in this position before two years ago? Yeah, I mean, look, I think it helps. I'm not, I got asked that question last week, to be honest. I don't, I don't think it's massive. I'm not into big in, in the experience one, and, you know, people have been here, you know, obviously, yeah, I think there's a, there's a, there's a certain element, of course, it's going to help. Um, but I think I'm, I'm, I'm more on the lines of, look, I think I realise the dynamics of my team. I realise what they are and where we are. I've been working out here for, with, with them for some time. I know that if we approach this game with the ingredients which I'm constantly on about um, with the team and what we need to do, then we'll win, we'll win more than we lose football matches. I have no doubt about that. Um, and that's probably the main thing what, what was from my side. We need to turn up, we need to show up, we, and we need to show up with the what I'm constantly on about I'm constantly talking about and about a mentality and a professionalism and a real desire about us and a mindset. And if we do that, then like I say, I think we'll be fine. So experience here, yeah, of course, I think it helps. It. But what's more important for me is um, is, a, is that side I've just said, really. Two more quickly. First of all, your first full season as a manager, how are you going to deal with the pressure going up to and into the game or is it, is it literally you're able to treat this like any other game? Yeah, I've been, um, I've been fine to be fair in, 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 in these situations. I think obviously as a, as a manager and from my point of view and my staff, you, you prepare to, to every last millimetre which we try and do and you get to that point where the players cross the line and you know that you, you give them every sort of information, you've ticked every box and all in it now you try and display that so I mean you try and leave it every stone turn and that probably eases the, the worry or all that and then you realise that in football you can lose football matches and you can win football matches you can lose them and, and that's the way it is that's the world we're in I think I'll oh, leave it as a manager you want to stand there and look at a team that represents myself and represents a football club and a team that obviously you know with, with certain things that give you every chance to win a match and um, I think that's probably it. Really, that's the that's the biggest thing. It's been it's been a good year for for us and the, and the football team's been a good year. A, a team that took over eighteen months ago in the Premier League, what well, didn't win many football matches and was in a real we was in a real mess. If, if you think about it on on the pitch, that was evident because people see that off the pitch. There was other issues as well. And um, from there, we built up slowly and progressed along the way. There's still loads to be done, and there's still loads of areas for us to improve. And I see that, but I also see a real a quick turnaround from a mentality which was losing most weeks on the downfield side. So now there's the ones which can go and have won 23 games, 24 games now um, this year, which is some going. And uh, I feel like that is switching around a little bit. Like I say, we need to keep going. And the last one, this isn't a whether you, you trust your team or not question, uh, but the last one, how much would, over the last year, I suppose you've enjoyed being on the sidelines, but how much would you absolutely love to be on the pitch tomorrow night to direct traffic and, and that, <laughs> make sure that your plans are completely implemented? Yeah, I mean, there's always time when you, um, when you stand there, I'm sure it's like any, any coach, you stand there and you think like, Try and influence it somewhere or another. That's not me no more. I have to try and influence things from the sideline. I have to try and influence things from Monday to Friday and you know, with everyone else, really. So, um, big games tomorrow. These are the games what you dream of planning when you're a player. These are the ones what make or break. You get to this point of the season and these are the deciders, really. Everything else you've done during the year, people quickly forget. And you now suddenly you're in the, you're in the real nitty gritty where you judge, really. And, this is what we all we all love to be. You're doing something right when you get to this end of the season and you're involved in these games. And um, you know, I look forward to the players again tomorrow night watching that now I have to stand on the sideline and watch it and um, frustrating sometimes, of course, but um, ultimately um, yeah, it's exciting. Good luck tomorrow, my friend. Yes, in. Thank you, mate. Thanks, Abe. Um, if you wouldn't mind going on uh, on mute, please. We'll carry on with broadcast section. Um we have uh, BBC London and Press Association. If we can go to Nick Godwin, please, BBC London, if you have any questions. Hello, Scott. Uh, good to talk to you. Um, on the Mitrovic front, obviously you say he's back today. Whatever happens tomorrow night and indeed next week, is it fair to say you're going to have to manage that situation for as long as this season goes on for? Um, not really. I, you know, you hope not. I hope I, hope I don't have to manage it. I'm con we're constantly managing all situations and I'm sure... 
other teams who are still playing at this moment in time are doing the same because of the vast amount of football we've had to play in such a short space of time. Um, regarding regarding Alex, no, you know, I, I that's not the case. But like I say, I, I wouldn't want to just specifically say Alex. I, there's there's a group of players which which you're, you're managing and you're having to, to to work best scenarios with and speak constantly to to my staff with in terms of what's the best protocols to, to put in place for, for these for these people. Because because there was a sense perhaps that you were saving him for tomorrow night. Um, the, a lot of the conversation leading up to the first leg. Um, I, I'm not, you know, obviously you're not going to give us a complete indication as to what you're going to do with it. But is it a fairly black and white decision that you're going to have to make? Yeah, I had to make a decision. I had to make a call which I felt was best for the team and I thought was best for the football club and how we approach it. And um, I knew the game was over two legs, so. Yeah, like you say, I'm not. You know, as you can imagine, I'm not going to. I'm not going to sit here and, and, and discuss that in detail. But yeah, like he, he trained today along with Cavalero. the same. cavalero has been out now for the last two games, um, and he was the same. He trained today for the first time as well. So um, yeah, we we are where we are, and we'll we'll keep managing them situations and, and working out what's best for us. Really. Um, with, with the second leg coming up. It's, it's fair to say that on nights like this, when Cardiff are in, in a very difficult position, they could kind of try anything. Are you having to kind of prepare your team that if, for the fact that there may be a surprise, they may try something you know, that, that you're not prepared for and that nights like this can end up going a bit kind of off the rails? And it's not just you know, us saying that. You know, there's, there's evidence that these second legs can go crazy. Yeah, no, I think you're, you're exactly right. I, mean, I think you're, you're, you're wrong with how you explain that. And I think you're... That's it. We're playing against a wounded animal in Cardiff. We obviously come away with a two 0 win, a result um, which which we deserved, and I thought we played very well. In, um, but like you say, we need to approach this game in a, in a, in a real in a real way, which is very professional, and go about our work in a real real professional way, and understand what's it, what's in front of us. I don't know what Cardiff will do. They have they come swinging or like a box or what has nothing to lose. We need to quickly work out that. And teams have done that against us previous. We've had certain scenarios where that happens. We need to be bright. We need to use our qualities to try and try and break through that and, and, and go and try and score goals. I honestly don't know. My players will be fully prepared for that. We set that picture out, and you just explained it is exactly how I'm going to be setting out. To them. I don't know how they come, but however they come, we need to face up to it. We need to match up to it, and uh, we need to probably stamp our our style on the game and our quality on the game. Every game we go into this year, the way we play and how we address games and approach games is we go into games wanting to put our stamp on it and get a real control about us and, and, and take front foot and, and, and try and win a football match from that point. Um, it's going to be no different. The, the way we approach this game is no different. It's the same approach. We get out, we try and get our quality on, on, on it. We try and get our stamp on it. We try and work out the best way to get our control and then from there, hopefully building the game and, and, and try and execute and win it. Um, but like you say, how Cardiff comes is, is down to Cardiff, and then we work out. We'll work out from there, and the players will work out quickly. Okay, this is what we need to do at this point now to to nullify that and, and to put our stamp on it. And how much are you enjoying this? Because you know, as has been has been mentioned, this is the start of your managerial career, and you you know you're faced with this enormous challenge, um, but a very exciting one at that. I don't know whether you can enjoy it or whether you you get the chance in these matches to be able to kind of step back and go. You know, this is what it's all about. This is what I want to be a manager for, to be in, in games like this with absolutely everything to play for. I just wonder what your your kind of reflections were on your role in in, in all of the madness, really. Yeah, I think it's um, I think it's that it's excitement. And, you know, they, these are the you're involved in these games. You're doing something right, you know, the teams and the players, because this is where things are decided. Whether that's cups, leagues, promotions, whatever it is, is. This is where you want to be. So um, certainly that's the way it is. And of course, it's uh, regarding reg regarding myself. Yeah, it's nothing but excitement. Preparing the team to to try and take us to the next level and try and put in another good performance, like every week. I just break it down game by game, really. And it's a bit cliche, but well, the next game ahead is is Cardiff. The last one has totally gone, and it's a race from my brain. And it needs to be erased from the players' brains as well. We put in a very good performance. We played very, very well. But that's done. And that's dusted. And that's yesterday's news. What is next now is another another big game. 
with another challenge, all the pitfalls that you've suggested, but then I also see all the positives, what we can produce and how we can really show our quality again and, and show what good players we are and what a good team we are and how we're moving forward. And um, that's the sole focus now. And that's the aim for me and the players, really. Nick, is that many, 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 yeah, many thanks, Scott. I was going to say best of luck. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you, mate. Thanks, Nick. If you can go on mute as well, please. And um, we'll, we'll stay on broadcast. A couple of questions, please. Jonathan, if you have any. Yeah, hi, sorry. It's just, just a quick one from me. Um, I appreciate that you're focusing, obviously, all on, on next next week or so, but uh, in terms of transfers, you've, you've been linked with Tottenham and Oliver Skid this week. I was wondering um, if that's a move you, know, you might fancy or what you make of him as a player. Yeah, on, honestly, Jonathan, I know um, at this present moment in time, I mean, it's been it's been so far from my mind, really. I've just got a real one sole focus and one real aim and, and, and a laser focus on trying to trying to get results and trying to develop the team and trying to put us in the best position and to try and win win the matches what we have in front of us and that task has been at the forefront of my mind and I've probably I've not even entered the thought of, of, of transfers and that the club have have protocols and policies in place and there's people in them departments which I'm sure are, are, um, are looking at, at where we need to improve and where we need to get better and I've obviously had input in that previous to, to this moment but I'm sure come the end of the season when it's all, all said and done and, and we're at the end of it we'll, I'll sit down with them departments recruitment departments and um, I'll have probably some more in-depth conversations with them and, and really then look at that as the next part because I Areas, so. but at this point in time, it, it, yeah, it, I'm sure you'd expect me to say that, but it's a possibility. Really, I've not really discussed any place. Yeah, it was worth a try. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Jonathan. You can go on mute, and can we move over to the uh, the written section?